Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. Stay hungry, stay foolish. No matter how many times people tell you, you, if you want a great career, you have to pursue your passion, you have to pursue your dreams, you have to pursue the, you know, the greatest fascination in your life. You hear it again and again, and then you decide not to do it. It doesn't matter how many times you download Stephen Jay's Stanford commencement address, <laughs> you still look at it and decide not to do it. I'm not quite sure why you decide not to do it. You're too lazy to do it, it's too hard, you're afraid if you look for your passion and don't find it, you'll feel like you're an idiot. So then you make excuses about why you're not going to look for your passion. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. And as far as I can tell, it's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass. Passion is your greatest love. Passion is the thing that will help you create the highest expression of your talent. Passion, interest, it's not the same thing. What you want is passion. It is beyond interest. You need 20 interests, and then one of them, one of them might be gra grab you, one of them might engage you more than anything else, and then you may have found your greatest love in, in <clears throat> comparison to all the other things that interest you. And that's what passion is. If it's a passion, you cannot stop thinking about it. The mind cannot stop thinking about the thing it loves. Right. Passion is you have trouble putting it out of your mind. You almost need discipline mm -hmm. to put it out of your mind to deal with, you know, pedestrian things like taking a shower. So that's one of the marks. What Follow Your Passion tells you to do is three things. The first is to identify your greatest interests. Second, find careers that match those interests. Thirdly, pursue those careers no matter what. Finding a fulfilling career is just a matter of having the courage to pursue your passion. Turns out, if you follow your passion, you're probably going to fail. In my opinion, you have all been given some terrible advice. And that advice is this, follow your passion. Year after year, thousands of aspiring American idols show up with great expectations only to learn that they don't possess the skills they thought they did. What's really amazing though, is not their lack of talent. The world's full of people who can't sing. It's their genuine shock at being rejected. The incredible realization that their passion and their ability had nothing to do with each other. Look, if we're talking about your hobby, by all means, let your passion lead you. But when it comes to making a living, it's easy to forget the dirty truth. Just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean you won't suck at it. 
I'm leery of passion for a few reasons, but one of them is that passion is not a plan. It's a feeling, and feelings change. We think our interests matter a lot more than they do because we really underestimate how much they change. Just think uh, about your own interests five or ten years ago and how different they are from today. You are probably interested in completely different things. Five or ten years' time, you will be interested in totally different things again. All this means that your present interests are just not a solid basis on which to choose a career. If you're not just going to follow your passion, what should you do instead? If I had to sum up career's advice as a single slogan, here's what I would choose. Do what's valuable. By this I mean focus on getting good at something that genuinely helps others and makes the world a better place. That's the secret to a fulfilling career. Instead of asking what our own interests and passions are, we should be focusing much more on what we can do for other people and to make the world a better place. Advice, follow your passion, just gets things backwards. Rather than start from what we happen to be passionate about now and then hope that success and a fulfilling career will follow, instead it's much more true to say that we should focus on doing what's valuable and then that will lead to passion and a fulfilling career. Your happiness on the job has very little to do with the work itself. On Dirty Jobs, I remember a very successful septic tank cleaner, a multimillionaire who told me the secret to his success. I looked around to see where everyone else was headed, he said, and then I went the opposite way. Then I got good at my work. Then I began to prosper, and then one day I realized I was passionate about other people's crap. I've heard that same basic story from welders, plumbers, carpenters, electricians, HVAC professionals, hundreds of other skilled tradesmen who followed opportunity, not passion, and prospered as a result. I think when you put passion first, you erect a giant wall. And if you can get over it and get down to the other side, then you get to write the biography and tell the world about how you identified your wish. And people love to read that crap. In my view, <laughs> that's simply not how most success works. So how do people end up loving what they do for a living? Well, we know that follow your passion sounds good, but it's too simplistic. The more common story is that they systematically build up a skill. Passion grows along with that skill. You can't have a good job until you're good at something. And in knowledge work, deep work, and the different rituals and habits that surround it is what's going to help you build up those skills and therefore build this working life that you really love. So to bring it back to where we started, if we look back to Steve Jobs, we see actually this is what he did. So he might have stumbled into Apple Computer, but once that opportunity was there, he was obsessive about building things that are actually of value to the world. And he, as he did this better and better, as he became more valuable to the world, he became more and more passionate about what he did for a living. So if I had to summarize this in one phrase, I'd say, if you want to love what you do, do what Steve Jobs did and not what he said. Never follow your passion, but always bring it with you. There's clearly a conflict in advice here. One is go for your passion and don't settle until you find it. And the other is develop useful skills and follow opportunity. Now, to be clear, it's not find your passion and everything will work out. Steve Jobs is saying life will hit you in the head with a brick. And Larry Smith says, passion is necessary for a great career, but it's not sufficient. There's no magic here. Success also demands patience, persistence, focus, discipline, independence of mind, resourcefulness, experimentation, and high creativity. It's possible there's an in-between advice here. It would be to develop your in-demand skills and pursue opportunity while pursuing your passion during your downtime. But it's also possible that you'll be burnt out from your income earning job and you might not have the energy to be productive during your downtime. I was thinking of learning programming just like Benjamin Todd says. Go after some skills and try and get good at them. And these are skills that are really in demand and can be used in many different areas. I might pick computer programming as an example for the next decade. But then I'd be like Jim Carrey's dad going into accounting because it's a safe job. I don't think there's a right answer when it comes to following your passion or opportunity. 
But I do know this. If I don't try making a living from making videos, I'll be kicking myself in the future. Since I don't need income right now, right this minute to survive, I'm going to take the advice of follow your passion. This might change in the near or not too distant future, and I might have to pursue programming eventually out of necessity, but until then, I'll focus on making videos. Thanks for watching, and may you be free from suffering.